body language, size, situational, uh, you know, observing. Are we really good at paying attention to what's going on around us during our business engagement? Stick around for a powerful and short show. Thanks. Hey guys, Jeff Mason, Simple Biz 360 Podcast. I'm your host, and uh, simplebiz360.com is our home. So we're so excited to have you on today. And I want to start with a little story about a trade show. So, you know, I was at this trade show, and there was a little lull in my booth activity. So we're jammed in. You're kind of tight quarters, 10 by 10 booth. And, um, you know, I have this vendor next to me. So I'm kind of shouldn't be, but you know, he's loud. You're right there on top of everybody. So I'm eavesdropping, if you will. And I kind of noticed this whole thing unfold. So I'm looking out of the corner of my eye and I catch this buyer who's in a slouched, you know, really um, just looked like sludge sitting there and was obviously bored and it didn't look happy, looked agitated, in fact. And this guy's talking and talking and talking. And she's got her hand, uh, her head on her hand. And she's just, you know, got her own elbow on the um, table there. And it, and it was an ugly looking scene. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm kind of waiting for this crescendo to happen. And she utters, uh, excuse me, will you please move this along? Uh, I'm bored. And, you know, the guy's like, you know, you're loose. She says, you're losing me. And the guy says, well, I got 10 more minutes and, uh, you know, just, just hang in there. And then the guy's phone rings. So he takes the phone call. After that, and I'm thinking, dude, you are, you need to pivot like now. And there was no pivot. There was no, and her eyes are rolling. You could see her look to her associate. Like, can you believe the audacity of this guy? Now, this woman just finished telling you, um, sir, can you please move this along? You're losing me. Those were her exact words. So again, you know, how many times have we, been in situations where we're not conscientious of the room, we're not reading the room, and things like that are happening. So uh, really, I just want to encourage you as you go through your business transaction, you've got to be kind of using the eyes in the back of your head, on the sides of your head, if you will. Just put your head on a little bit of a swivel and start touching base with what's going on in your environment. Uh, is there eye rolling? Is there body squirming? Is there body repositioning? Is there arm folding? Are there sighs? Are there deep breaths? Is there gum smacking? You ever heard, heard one of those? You know, you're like, oh, what's going on over there? You know, um, checking their phones, right? Opening up their computer, turning their computer on. Hand signaling to other people like you're out of the corner of your eye. See some movement. Oh, boy. You know, this person's saying to that person something. Uh, gesturing to other associates, right? That, that, it's that deer in the headlight looks like, oh, my gosh, why am I here? This is painful. I can't stand listening to this. And, and just complete boredom, Right? I mean, we, we've been there and we encourage you to be observant and, and, and in touch with your customers as this is happening. I mean, I mentioned a great story in my book about technology going awry and, and what happened there. And I was in a room full of people and it was just ugly. I've been in a room full of, I was at a, I was a state highway patrol once and in and amongst many command personnel. And, um, you know, we were in a high level presentation and this poor, poor kid just starts reading a PowerPoint and he didn't, you know, didn't offer any side dialogue to it. He just handed it out and he read it word for word. And I mean, the command staff was going nuts. And I was, as a vendor, I was able to be in here to witness it. And I could just see these five or six people over in the corner. I mean, eyes rolling, arms flailing, you know, I mean, just body gesture and sign. He just uh, couldn't believe that they were hearing what they heard. And that, that, that gentleman walked out of that room and they said, that vendor, that person's not welcome back. That, that's, they're done. So they, they toasted themselves in that situation. So, you know, we encourage this, this ability to do a quick pivot, you know, and I think, I think that, you know, we've heard a lot of this terminology, especially with the pandemic and especially with, you know, what we've been through uh, from 2020 to 2000, who knows long, how much longer this will go on, but, you know, 2022. And we've pivoted on a lot of fronts, right? We've had to do this in a lot of ways. So we encourage you to be a pivoter, you know, like this guy at the trade show. He should have heard that from the customer, should have listened to what the customer was saying. Hey, can you please move this along, um, you know, 
you're boring me, but 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 she said, you know, you're losing me. And even worse, you're losing me. And you know, you got to go, okay, great. Let's let's stop right here. What else can we do to get this, you know, show on the road again and to, to get a, the train back on the tracks? So uh, again, we just um, you know, note taking is one of the things that we just find as such a precious um, demonstration that you're caring for the customer and that you're listening to the customer and that you are, you know, never going to be put in a position where, um, you know, you're going to have to do these quick pivots and dances because you're asking the customer questions, you're, in, you're engaging the customer in the process of the evaluation of the product or the buying process, you're taking careful notes, and what are you doing? The note-taking demonstrates that you're listening, you're engaged, you're focused, you're, you're an active participant in stewardship of their time, you're respecting their time, and if their time is money, you're in essence respecting their money so it's a very healthy thing and we've um, in the back of my book there's a picture of my note uh, pads that I've had and I've used since 2008 when I opened my sales agency and these notepads, um, I mean, I can go back in them. And I did, in fact, the other day, I went back to my 2008 to look up something that happened in February of that year. And I found the quotes right there. It was right there. So, you know, it's great for going back and not missing um, all the detail that was baked into these conversations. But, you know, more importantly, you know, you're really, you're really in a situation where, um, you know, you don't have to really uh, read the room in that catastrophic sense of reading it, you're, you're, cause you've got that room actively participating with you now still be observant, but you know, but note taking is certainly one way to make sure you're sending the right and healthy messages to those people. So again, I just encourage you, um, we hear it. That's a term that's thrown out there quite a bit. It means uh, different things to different people, but um, if you're not paying attention, um, you, you're doing yourself some harm, I think. So again, just uh, we encourage you, and uh, we want to leave you with a tune today by Crosby, Stills, and Nash, 49 bye-byes. Wow. Uh, nobody wants to get customers or potential customers you know, waving us off and saying bye-bye, right? We want customers coming back, man. We want repeat customers. We want referral customers, and we want to make sure we're letting those customers get to that point because during their engagement with us, we have respected their time, respected their money. We've listened to them. We've taken careful notes and we've done everything we can to say to them, Hey, you're important. We're showing you you're important. And when that happens, the room reading, it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't become as critical because everyone's engaged and everyone's realizing we're all working towards the same goal. So 49 bye-byes um, that Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. Now, I think, I, you know, I read, I couldn't find verification on it, but these guys, you know, you, know, you, you, you have bands, the Birds, the, the Buffalo Springfield, and the Hollies is where Crosby, Stills, and Nash came from. So it's a super group. And these guys harmonize really, really well. What I couldn't find verification on, but what I remember reading one time was that there were, a, I think it was a Joni Mitchell pool party uh, in L.A. area, and they were, uh, they were in the pool, you know, um, singing together in the pool. And people were like, dudes, this is, you're off the charts. This is crazy. You, you sound great. And so these guys got together and put out some albums. They, they eventually got Neil Young to come on to, to create that foursome. And Neil was with Buffalo Springfield. And, you know, all these guys have been inducted in the Hall of Fame, uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, as the band and then as individual members of Springfield, the Birds, and um, the Hollies. So, you know, some real stellar musicians here. And a cool tune from the album, uh, name of the same, just Crosby, Stills, Nash. Uh, was the name of the album 1969 and that uh, guys enjoy it and like we always say you want to improve the results of your business we recommend you look at the how you're doing business should direct correlation fix that and you get better results so thanks again for uh, st sticking in there with us uh, we're coming to you from half coast studios matt parker on the boards today st louis missouri and missouri and we say thanks for sticking with us and we will see you in 168 hours